Hey everybody, this is Kyle with the Brickto Security, and today we're continuing on the Hack the Box starting point series with the Pennyworth box. Let's get going. All right, so I got a box up and running here. I'm gonna grab our IP, jump right into Cali, and I'm gonna do sudo nmap, put in our IP, do a dash sv to get a version number, and a dash sc to do a default script search. I'm gonna let this run real quick, and I'll get back in a second. All right, so it looks like we have just port 8080 open uh, for an HTTP page. It's running Jetty. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into Hack the Box, answer some of these initial questions just to kind of see what we're going to be working with. What does the acronym CVE stand for? Now you're going to be working with CVEs a lot, and these stand for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. And what CVEs are, are publicly disclosed computer security flaws that are overseen by the MITRE Corporation. And this helps security vendors and professionals alike know what they are looking for when they see a specific breach or issue going on with a service or system. What do the three letters in CIA referring to the CIA triad and cybersecurity stand for? These are going to be your basic principles that cybersecurity stands on. They stand for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. What is the version of the service running on port 8080? We just found that in our nmap scan. That was the Jetty 9.4.325 version, all that. Submit that. Okay, so we know that we're working with CVEs. Let's hop back into Cali and find what that service is running. I'm gonna copy our IP address again. Go back in, open up Firefox. I'm gonna put in our IP address and open it on port 8080. Press enter and it opens up this web page and it says, welcome to Jenkins with a login that we have. So we don't know anything about this company whatsoever, but we do know that Jenkins is going to be a service that is running this web host. Why don't we go ahead and look up to see if there's any Jenkins uh, web server default credentials. And let's see what pops up and what Google gives us. Uh, it says upon installation of Jenkins, the default username is admin while the default password gets filled by itself automatically. So based off of what I'm reading, you have to set manual configuration of the username and password from the initial fresh login. So let's just try some basic uh, administrative or root logins to see if we can do some manual brute forcing. So let's try something like admin admin, uh, admin root, admin password, uh, root root, root password, And luckily enough, it looks like that's what the login was. So taking a look at this administrative console, uh, we see that we have one basic script. We can add descriptions. Uh, maybe take a look at this. Warning says we have credential plugins of reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability. We could possibly check to see what that vulnerability is. Uh, we also see we have the build of Jenkins 2.0. 289.1. I'm going to copy that. Let's take a look and see if there's any exploits that are openly available to us. As it turns out, there is a Pwn Jenkins notes about Jenkins. Now let's take a look at this Jenkins pen testing GitHub page. Uh, it's talking about remote code execution on quite a few of these. Uh, there's password spraying, decrypt Jenkins secrets. And then there's something that mentions Groovy scripts right here. Now this might be interesting for us because if we remember looking back at our admin dashboard, there is a Groovy script. So I wonder if that's something that we can actually build into uh, going back and looking for the command execution. It looks like we may be able to define a specific process or set up a reverse shell using a Groovy script. Now all Groovy is, is just a programming language that is associated with Java. So maybe if we go into the administrative console here, we might find something. Uh, maybe let's look in Manage Jenkins. We can configure our system, look at the different logs. 
And there's actually a script console for us right here at the bottom. Right here at the very top, it says type in an arbitrary Groovy script and execute it on the server. Now this is good news for us, which means we might be able to use one of the Groovy scripts that was in that Pwn Jenkins GitHub page directly into here with our own IP address and see if we can get a listener on our side to set up a reverse shell. Let's go back into the GitHub page. I'm gonna scroll down and we need to set up this script right here. Uh, looking through it, it looks like the only thing we will we'll need to change right now is going to be the string host. And we're gonna set that as our own IP. I'm gonna copy this over, go back into Jenkins. I'm gonna paste that in and we need to change the string host. Let's open up our terminal real quick and type in ifconfig. And right at the bottom, we have our ton zero. This is the tunnel VPN connection that's going back into hack the box. Let's copy this IP address, go into Groovy and paste that into our Jenkins script console to finish our Groovy script. Now setting this up on the server side within Jenkins is a great thing. Now what we need to do next is have a listener on our end be able to receive this connection that's being requested from Jenkins. In order to do that, I'm gonna go in to our terminal again. I'm gonna put this back up to the top and I'm going to set up a netcat listener. You can do that with the command nc. Now what Netcat is, is a utility tool that listens for read and write instructions using TCP and UDP. If I want to, I can do dash H on Netcat and it gives us what all of our different flags are. So I'm going to utilize the N for numeric only IP addresses. So there's gonna be no DNS. I'm gonna use the L for listen mode. I'm gonna do V for verbose. Uh, we can use it twice for more verbose, but I'm just gonna do a single. And I'm gonna do P to specify our port. So I'm gonna do netcat dash NLVP. And in order to know what port we're gonna listen on, go back in and look at our initiating port right here. And it's going to be one, two, three, four. So setting this up, I'm going to do one, two, three, four. I'm gonna press enter. And now our netcat listener is listening on any network for port one, two, three, four. Going back into Firefox, let's run this Groovy script and see what we get. Press run. And we can see that our web page is hanging. Going back into our terminal, it says that we have a connection to the web server right there, and it's completely from unknown. So if I were to type, who am I? We are root. So it doesn't give us the exact shell that we are normally used to seeing in our terminal, but we have full command execution with our reverse shell. So why don't we go ahead and try to look for our flag, uh, type ls, see what's there, cd, dot dot see what's anything back press ls uh, it's going to be the same page let's try the home root directory so let's cd into root type ls and there is our flag right there let's cut out our flag.txt and that is our answer for hack the box now let's go back in and answer the rest of these hack the box questions what versions of jenkins is running on the target Going back in, let's grab that Jenkins 2.289.1. Paste that in, let's remove the Jenkins part. What type of script is associated as input on the Jenkins script console? That language was Groovy. What would the string command variable from the Groovy script snippet be equal to if the target VM was running Windows? Well, if we were running something in Windows, same with the terminal, it would be command.exe. What is a different command than IPA we could use to display our network interfaces information on Linux? For Linux, that is gonna be ifconfig. 
What switch should we use with Netcat for it to use UDP transport mode? Well, if you'd like to go back in, take a look. I'm going to open up a, another terminal right here, netcat-h. And if we we're looking to do UDP mode, we were going to do dash U. What is the term used to describe making a target host initiate a connection back to the attacker host? That is a reverse shell. And finally, we need to submit our root flag. Let me copy that over and paste that in for our final. And we've completed the Pennyworth box. Congratulations on completing another box. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.